Hello Excel Academy. I'd like to demonstrate a feature in the new version 3.0 release uh, that I think you'll really like. If you haven't upgraded to the newest release, uh, this feature alone I think is, is well worth it. Uh, I think a lot of people are um, focusing on the aesthetics of dental CAD and that you can do a light theme and a dark thing theme but this functionality that I'm, uh, that I'm about to show you uh, really changes how you can design even just single units. Uh, makes things much more efficient, uh, much more aesthetic, and it's going to save you a ton of time in designing your restorations. So uh, let's get into it. Uh, I'm designing two crowns here, and you can see it's always shown the contacts uh, the, of the, um, the, the occlusion. Okay, of the opposing dentition. And you can see here, if I, if I just change it, um, if I'm just gonna move it uh, occlusally, you can see that the contract contact strength or the intersection of this crown in number 19, you can see that it changes uh, immediately uh, as, I'm, as I'm moving it. And the same thing, I'm gonna turn off the lower jaw scan, and the same thing even when I go uh, side to side, you can see the adjacent uh, intersection there, or the contact strength. Okay, what is new for what's an added functionality for this version is uh, if you go to the advanced menu in the tooth placement step, uh, you'll see we have these three icons, uh, six icons really, three on the top and three on the bottom. And then you have a slider here, it says posterior shape, deep or flat. This is the anat instant anatomic morphing tool. Um, even it doesn't say it, but um, so let's uh, let me show you what what that does. Um, so we're just going to focus on number 19 right now. Don't worry about 18. Um, and these first two uh, options are the axis uh, scaling axis axis. So do we want that scaling axis to be relative to the tooth? Uh, dimensions or relative to your view. So as you rotate it, the axis going into the monitor right now versus um, the tooth axes, okay, the bounding boxes of just the teeth. Uh, that'll make more sense when I, when I start to uh, move this tooth around. And I'm going to turn off the, uh, the opposing right now just so um, you, can, you can see what we're going to be talking about here. And uh, this, this um, final tool is that the instant anatomic morphing tooth features free-forming keyboard options. So shift is scale parts, control is rotate the parts, and shift is, plus uh, control is to translate uh, the parts or bodily move them. This is going to keep the uh, margins of the tooth and allow you just to move the tooth parts as opposed to moving the whole tooth. So uh, typically for me I keep it uh, this left option the tooth axis when scaling. So uh, if I want to you can see here I have this open contact on the mesial. I want to just scale the tooth going mesial but I want to leave this distal contact right here. Like, like let's say I like this distal part, I'm going to hold the shift button and you can see now we have this purple arrow that shows up. That means it's going to pull the tooth to the distal, leaving the mesial static. I don't want that. As I move my cursor toward the mesial, you see that arrow shift. So I'm uh, shift to the distal. So I want to keep the distal surfaces and only scale toward the mesial. I don't do anything special, this is just, just how ExoCAD, DentalCAD um, interprets the movement. And now when I scale, you can see it holds that distal static. Okay, It's still scaling, but it holds that distal contact area. So that's great. If I only want to scale to the mesial, perfect. It leaves the distal in place. And the same thing goes for buccolingual. I leave the lingual contact there if I only want to scale buccally. Okay, and if I move it toward the lingual, it's going to keep the buccal uh, axis plane 
uh, there. It's going to keep that in that in that buckle plane. Okay, it doesn't move lingually from the buckle. So that's uh, for the scaling option here uh, relative to the tooth axis. Now you see these three uh, icons where it says lower jaw options. We've got um, instant anatomic morphing cutting, uh, instant anatomic morphing deformation, and instant anatomic morphing with minimal thickness. So for me, I always keep that checked because I always want to keep the minimal thickness. Um, but I want you to keep an eye on what happens to this number 19 now. Um, let's just do with cutting first. When I scale number 19, or let's say I move it, let's say I'm going to move it uh, occlusally. I'm going to move it occlusally. You can instantly see these blue areas. These have been cut. And it's cut instantly as I'm moving it occlusally. So you can see here, I've got a flat distal buckle cusp here because it's that's how it lies against the antagonist and as I move that tooth dental cad is automatically cutting those areas that are going to be intersections leaving the rest of the tooth morphology so it's an instant uh, before, it would show us the cut, it would show us the intersection, and then you would have to go to the Adapt tab and then cut the intersections and it might look different. This shows you instantly uh, what the tooth is going to look like. As I move it around, so it's real time. And let's say I, I like the cervical uh, margins. I want to keep that fixed. Well, I just put this uh, as free form, just the tooth parts, and now I can just move that cusp and it automatically cuts, leaving the rest of the uh, cervical margin intact. So very nice feature uh, just to get that exactly how I want without, even, without going to the free form step. This is just in the tooth placement step. So, um, you know, you're getting this you're getting fine tuning uh, in the very first placement of the restoration. If we change this to uh, instant anatomic morphing deformation, not cutting, um, and I'm gonna be able to move the whole tooth now that I've got this freeform parts unchecked. Now when I move it, you can see that it automatically adjust the cusp. It's kind of hard to tell from this view. So let's kind of go from a, an oblique view. You can see this mesiolingual cusp tip. As I move the whole tooth up, it's moving that cusp tip up and changing the cusp height. I go side to side and you can see those buccal cusps morphing to the anatomy of the antagonist. So really, all I do is place the tooth it's already morphed to adjust, to adapt to the antagonist. I don't like that cuss tip, so now I'm going to change off, change uh, to the parts tool, and now I'll just bring that cuss down a little bit. And the rest of the tooth is already in, in perfect occlusion. Again, this is just from the tooth placement step. Maybe I want to bring this cusp in a little bit. And as I bring it in, you can see that the distal buccal cusp already uh, adapts itself. So a uh, very nice feature here. Makes it very easy to uh, adapt to your occlusion without having to go to a fine uh, setting the tooth and then going to a fine tuning uh, freeform step. So, uh, and now I can do that with 18 as well. Let's turn, let's move the whole tooth.
I can keep my scaling on and just bring it to the mesial a little bit. And there it's already adapted to the occlusion and uh, you know I'm just gonna have to go in and, and change that proximal but the shape is is excellent I don't have to do much in the next step so this anatomic uh, anatomic instant anatomic morphing tool um, I think is going to be a huge benefit uh, as you're designing even just single units uh, it's going to make it so fast so efficient and it's going to look great so that's just one of the features um, that you can enjoy with the new uh, version 3.0 uh, Galway release. So I hope you enjoy. Uh, use this. Give me some feedback. Uh, let me know your, your comments uh, about this tool and how you've been using it uh, in your designs. So thanks so much for watching. And I'll talk to you soon.